Hey, good day, folks. Uh, welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. That black rectangle will be moved in a moment here. Uh, I haven't figured out a way to get it completely off the screen, but I will move it in a second. I promise. I just want to give you guys some context about this video I'm getting ready to do before I begin the video. Just so you guys have some level of understanding of, of I guess, where I'm coming from. Now, this video is going to be about a, a woman, a white woman, who happens to be, I believe, yeah, she's the mother of this young man that you're looking at right now. She was in an interracial relationship, and to make a long story short, her neighbor did not approve of, of, of her family, so... He made their life a living hell, basically. Now, this incident took place in Lockport, Illinois, which is a, which is a northeastern suburb of Chicago. And it's, you know, we're, this ain't even a small town. This is a small city. The population is, is 6,094 people. So we're not talking about some small town located located somewhere in Mississippi or Alabama. We're talking about a Chicago suburb here. So bear that in mind. And just to add some context to the video, I'm going to give you guys a racial demographics real quick. Uh, you have an 83.6% white population, 1.5% black, 1.7% Asian, and 9.8% Hispanic. And depending on the traffic, uh, it's about an hour drive to get to Chicago. And this is a southwest Chicago suburb, which is 34 miles southwest of Chicago. Now, crime here is fairly low. So the crime here is not bad at all. And I'm assuming that's one of the main reasons why this woman wanted to move here. Low crime, uh, not super far from Chicago. Now, I don't know whether she purchased her home or she rented or how much she paid. I don't know none of that stuff. I wish I did, but, but unfortunately, I don't know that stuff. And I couldn't find it nowhere online. So let's play the video and you know we'll go we'll go from here. It's just it's hard, hard to think, think that, that someone wants to do damage in that way and form of just a single mother trying to survive, you know? Tonight, Melissa Robertson's family says she's still in the ICU after what authorities believe was a racially motivated murder attempt. Female subject shot in the stomach. Officials say Tuesday in Lockport, Illinois, 70-year-old John Shadbar was seen firing dozens of rounds within assaults. Oh, and, and by the way, now I know whenever I make a video of a, of a community, I mean of a city that may have been a former sundown town, and I bring up the fact that it used to be a former sundown town, or if anything that's racially more anything that's racial that may have went on in that community, rather it be the present or it be the past. I, you know, some of you or some people that have watched some of those videos have gotten upset. I even had a couple of people unsubscribe to my channel because of it. And as I've told you guys before, and I'll tell you guys again, if I'm not, you know, if you're not like this, then, you know, you, you, you got nothing to worry about. Cause my, my mentality is, uh, only a hit dog is going to holler. So, you know, if this is you, then I guess I'm talking about you. If this ain't you, then I'm not talking about you. So just bear that in mind. And situations like this are one of the reasons why I do bring up race. I would love to go around here and think and know that P 
people like myself can move anywhere. We can live anywhere. Nobody's going to bother us due to our race. Nothing bad is going to ever happen no matter where we go due to our race. Unfortunately, that's not the society that we live in. I wish it was, but it isn't. And since it isn't, you know, just for the sake of the safety of minorities in the United States, you know, reasons like that, reasons like what's going on here are the reasons why about, I want to say, a little over a year and a half ago, I began to include racial demographics on my videos. And, I'll, and, and if, it, if an area used to be a sundown community, I also include that. And if there's any information in correlation to that, I talk about it. Now, I'm not saying that communities that are predominantly white and used to be a former sundown communities are going to always be bad places for minorities to reside. I'm just saying that when certain things happen in those communities in 2024, yeah, you know, you might want to kind of take a few things into consideration and move accordingly. So let's continue the video. Mile rifle. The Chicago area man allegedly hitting his 45 year old neighbor in the chest and hand. You can actually see bullet holes. Robertson's son, Mikhail Johnson, says she is that neighbor, adding his seven year old brother and a three year old were just yards from the rampage on a trampoline. What goes through your mind? You know, I just thank God and I thank everything higher up that nothing even more tragic happened. Just Johnson says that for that years, Shanbar hurled that. racial epithets at his family. Robertson is white. Her two sons are black. He called her an N-word lover and just called me and my little brother N-words. The Will County Sheriff's Office says before this week's incident, the victim complained twice about Shadbar in March. Authorities writing one shouting incident was resolved by deputies. Hey, thank you. Got it on video. The Sheriff's Office says the other call was about possible gunshots and fireworks adding there was not enough evidence to make an arrest. But Johnson says his family made more calls. And it's just... It's All right, folks. Well, I didn't mean to stop it. Let me get back over here. All right, folks, you guys just heard this young man. Uh, they have made several calls to the local uh, law enforcement department. And they have endured this type of treatment from their neighbor for a number of years. Now, they've, I understand this family has been here in this neighborhood at this house for 10 years. And ever since they first moved into this community, their next door neighbor has been like this. I mean, I understand that, you know, he used, you know, he would always throw stuff at the kids he would always shoot his firearm towards them. And he was just basically, I mean, he was just basically a nuisance to the family. Constantly putting their life in danger, basically. And calling them all kind of racial slurs. You heard it all from this young man. And you also saw the damage that he did when he shot at when he shot at their home. Now, notice how that community didn't do anything about the situation. They didn't investigate. They didn't bother. They didn't bother to check his credentials to make sure he was even lawful to carry a firearm which you will find out later in the video that he shouldn't have never had that firearm. But they didn't check any of that. They didn't make any arrests. They, they basically let it slide under the rug. And later in the video, you will also have a better understanding of why. At least I think you will. So, now, honestly, I hope the woman's doing better. Now... I don't, I mean, I don't know if she's still in the hospital or she's doing better and she's at home again. I don't know. 
I looked online for an update. I couldn't find none, so I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping for her sake and her family's sake that she's doing better. And, you know, I wish the family best of luck because I know mentally what happened is going to stick with her children for the rest of their life, most likely. But honestly, and, and honestly, I was hesitant to do this video. Because at first, when I was going to do the video, my emotions were too high. And I would have said some stuff that probably would have got the video uh, demonetized or something. So, I mean, this story came out a month ago. And I wanted to address it then on this channel. But I didn't because I needed to calm down. I needed to collect my thoughts. And also, I was hoping that they would come with an update of what's going on with the woman, whether she's okay, whether she's, you know, she survived it or whatever the case. Now, uh, now, this video, I mean, this story does hit home to me a little bit uh, because uh, I was adopted at age five. And I'm also from the Midwest. For those of you that don't know, I'm from Elyria, Ohio. And I was adopted into a family with, uh, with white parents. Both my mom and my father, my adopted parents were white. I mean, I say were because they're both deceased at this point. RIP to both my mom and my dad. And the lady who I credit for saving my life. And I might make another video telling you that story. But the lady that could, who I credit for saving my life is my foster mother. She's still alive. She's 91 years old. I, you know, me and her, we still stay in touch to this day. Every few months I do drive up to Elyria. I mean, I do drive up to, yeah, to Elyria to go visit her. And she's also a white, she's a white woman. Now, I know for a fact that uh, my parents would have never put me or any of my siblings in this type of a situation in the first place. The first time, even the smallest thing, even the smallest situation would have happened to where the neighbors are showing hostility due to uh, the race of her children. My parents would have been a type of people that would have put the house up on the market and sold it and moved. Now, again, I don't know if this woman purchased the home or she just rented. Now, if she was renting the home, if that would have been my parents, they would have broke the lease early. If they brought, the, if they were purchasing, they would have sold it and left. Because just a little bit of history about myself, in terms of my family, I mean, my parents adopted four of us, me being the youngest. Now, my oldest sister, who passed away, unfortunately, of brain cancer, she was Hispanic. She passed away at age 34. And my brother and my sister... They're both biracial, white and black. So that's just a brief rundown of my family. And, uh, and like I told you a second ago, my parents were white. And I know for a fact my parents would have never put, put us in this type of a situation to where we would have to go 10 years like this young man had to go through and endure that type of abuse. So I would say for that, shame on his mom for making her children go through all that. I, I don't, you know, I don't get it. I mean, to me, it's unacceptable. So let's see. So let's see. So, so let's see what else he's got to say. Sorry. Chad Barr faces multiple charges, including for attempted murder and a hate crime. He has not entered a plea, and NBC News has not been able to reach an attorney for comment. Meanwhile, investigators released photos of this arsenal they say they discovered at Shadbar's home, including the AK-47 style rifle they believe was used in an attack that has changed lives forever. Jesse Kirsch, NBC News, Lockport, Illinois. It, 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 All right, folks. 
You saw that? You saw that along with me? I mean, this man clearly had a whole collection of firearms in the house. And you'll find out in a second here that he should have never had any of that. But having laid under their investigation, the very first time that the family called law enforcement, they would have saw all that. He would have been in handcuffs, been in jail. And that woman would have never been in the hospital because he wouldn't have never even had an opportunity to do what he did to her. And with a man like, you know, with a man like that, he, I mean, he's the type of, you know, he's the type of man that honestly have, and let's say he didn't do what he did to their mother. He's the type of man that if her kids would have been out with their friends, playing basketball, hanging out, doing whatever. Now, let's say they're playing basketball and the ball accidentally went into his yard and they went to his yard to retrieve the ball like any normal kid would do. He's the type of individual that would have pulled out his firearm and shot at them and then he would have and then he would have tried to claim self-defense. Even though his life wasn't in danger. So I would say it would have only been a matter of time before that individual, before that individual that uh, I'm not even going to address him as a human being because as far as I'm concerned, he's a piece of garbage. But he's the type of individual that piece of garbage is that uh, it would have only been a matter of time before he would have shot at one of her kids. And one of them could have potentially been severely injured in the ICU, or they could have been, or his mug, their mug, yeah, their mother would have had to have been planning the funeral for one of her kids, if not both of them. Inside the home of a Will County man accused of shooting his neighbor, 70-year-old John Shadbar is charged with first-degree attempted murder. After uh, I'm going I'm to, I'm going to run that back for a minute. All right, look at this, look at this individual. Now, I'm not the kind of person to judge people as far as how they look, but I'm going to be honest. If somebody looking like this individual was living next to a house that I was looking to purchase or rent, I probably would think twice before renting that house or buying that house. Now, I'm not sure what all that madness going on on his forehead and on his neck is i'm not sure i mean i don't care but that's i mean to me that's bizarre and sometimes you gotta look at a per i mean you know like i said i don't like to judge people by how they look but sometimes you know you gotta make some exceptions to the rule and i think this is one case where uh, exceptions to the rule as far as judging somebody by their looks needs to be made just for the sake of protecting yourself and in the case of this woman protecting her family. Because this man looked like he he looked he looked off. I'm just saying. So let, let, let's keep going. Murder after that shooting on Tuesday in unincorporated Lockport. Police later conducting a search warrant at his home where they say they found five weapons inside a wall, including two AK-47 style rifles. That's despite Shadbar's Foyd card being revoked in the 70s because of a felony arrest. Investigators believe one of those rifles was used to shoot 45-year-old Melissa I mean, y'all catch that? This man had a felony so, yeah, he shouldn't have never had those firearms. He had a felony. Now, having law enforcement done their job when they first called them, they would have seen that he had a felony. They would have seen that he was breaking the law. And he would have been arrested and locked up. And he would have most likely been charged with another felony for using firearms when he wasn't supposed to even be in possession of them. I mean, I don't know the laws of Illinois or Chicago or any of that. I'm just speculating here. I have when they done their job the first time they called, this woman wouldn't have never had to go to the hospital. She would have still been alive. Now, I will say that the first time 
something the the first time he was shooting blanks at them with with his firearm at that point for the sake of the of her and her family's safety uh she should have immediately relocated to a safer place i mean and again i don't know if she purchased a home or she rented a home i have no idea i wish i knew all I know is, by her sticking around for 10 years, by her sticking around for even, I mean, by her sticking around for the length of time that she stuck around, she definitely uh, kept her family in danger. So for that, I'm a little disappointed in her. I, you know, for that, I kind of got to question her ability to make good decisions as a parent. Robertson, who remains in a coma, in stable but critical condition. Robertson's family has said the shooting followed years of harassment and threats they believed were racially motivated. We've called the cops and he's thrown fireworks and he's shot blanks and um, nothing was done and it, it's very unfortunate. A friend who called 911 after the shooting also talked about the long-standing dispute. The homeowner, she has a history, she has made many calls about this guy. The Will County Sheriff's Office today releasing their own account saying they were... Okay, so this woman owned her home. Well, I mean, you know, being that she purchased a home, that does that definitely will add some complications to the situation. So, you know, obviously, when you first purchase a home, it typically, typically, depending on where you purchase your home at, and depending on how much you put down initially, and depending on just how your mortgage is set up, I would say for most people, it takes a minimum of three years to be able to sell your home to where you can even break even or sell it to where you could potentially walk away with a little bit of equity. Now, if I wanted to be nice and cut this woman a little bit of slack, now that I know that she purchased the home and not just rented and she wasn't just renting it, I would say after the first I would say after the first three years, she should have been contacting a local realtor and putting the house on the market and getting it sold. Now think about this. This incident right here just happened a month ago in you know in uh in May of twenty twenty four. So think about it for a minute. Now, she's living in the greater Chicago area. We are just getting out of a housing boom. So my question is, okay, so she didn't sell the house after the first three years, but she should have done that. But, but for whatever reason, she chose not to. My next question is, why didn't she take advantage of this housing the housing boom that went on from, I would say, 2021 to 2023 ish. The housing boom that we're just getting out of, what that we've had for the last few years, why didn't she take advantage of that housing boom and sell her house, you know, get her equity money and pack up all her crap and her, you know, and move her family somewhere safer? To where she wouldn't have a lunatic, she wouldn't have a lunatic bigot as a neighbor throwing fireworks at, throwing firecrackers at her children and shooting blanks in her yard. That's my question. And, and that's the reason why I kind of got to question her ability to make decent, to, to make good choices as a parent. Because like I said, I was raised by white parents, and I know for a fact my parents would have never put us in a situation like this. I mean, never. They would have sold that house, and they would have been up out of there. And if they would have, they would have been, my parents would have typed that, hey, if they lost money, they wouldn't have cared. Because for them, it would have been about the safety of, of, of us. But this woman, I don't know what the hell her deal was. I mean... I'm going to just say that 
I don't know what to say. I, don't, I mean, she should have been gone. She should have done sold her house. She should have done move elsewhere for the safety of her family. I mean, so let's keep going here. Responded to a total of three calls to the victim's home this year related to Shadbar. They say two of them were in March. The first for Shadbar allegedly yelling at Robertson and her children, and the second for fireworks and possibly a gun being shot over the victim's fence. Neither call led to an arrest. The third time they responded, Melissa Robertson had been shot. Now John Shadbar being held without... Okay, so three calls. And you no, know, recently before he finally uh, shot her and now she's laid up in the hospital, at least she was at the time of the story, three times. It took him three times. And so, okay, so the first two times, nothing was done. And this is the reason why that when I do videos about certain communities, I do talk about race. Because like in this situation, I mean, like I told you guys towards the beginning, uh, you know, Lockport, Illinois is a predominantly Caucasian uh, city. And like I also told you, not all predominantly Caucasian communities are necessarily bad places and unsafe places for minorities to reside but in this situation when some of the things were transpiring and happening to her and her family and she called law enforcement multiple times and they basically threw it under the rug and did absolutely nothing about it and i mean you know a light bulb should have been off in that woman's head she should have thought about those, uh, she should have thought about all that. And then she should have also thought, you know what? I got two black children. I got two black children to look after. I think she had two kids. I got two black children to look after. I'm living in a community to where there's only 1.5% black population. I called law enforcement multiple times. They did absolutely nothing to remedy my situation I'm going through with my neighbor who's acting like a complete lunatic. So, okay, so the third time they called, by then it was only because, by then she was injured and she had to go to the ER. And that's the only reason why this man is sitting in jail right now. Because he actually did something serious enough that they felt was serious enough to where they had no choice but to arrest him. And I'm willing to bet if they knew a way that they could get away with not arresting him, he probably would still be in his home and not sitting in jail. I'm just saying. So this is the reason why that sometimes you have to tuck your tail, you have to do what you got to do, and you got to move to other locations that are safer when you're in a situation like this. All that crap about I'm not leaving nowhere, this my home, you know, I mean, you know, all that pride stuff about this is my home. I'm fighting. I'm not going nowhere. Ain't nobody going to run me out of my house. Ain't nobody going to run me about the city. I got the right to be in the city. You know what? All that may be true. It sounds good. You know, it, it all that sounds good. But there comes a point where, like in this case, the safety of her children should have been more important than any pride that she may have had in her mind about not leaving the area. The safety of her children should have been more important than her owning that house. I'm just saying. Bond facing eight felonies and a growing investigation. ABC7 has also learned that the suspect's wife is now under investigation, too. The Cook County Sheriff's Office says she's a correctional sergeant at the Cook County Jail. She's been de-deputized while authorities look into the case. What? All right, folks. Uh, well, let me... All right, folks. That is the story... As you guys just heard, she's been de-deputized. 
She was working as a correctional officer, I'm assuming, in Wills County, because that's where Lockport is located. It's located in Wills County. Now I don't know if she's working for the county. Uh, yeah, she was working for the county. In, yeah, so anyways, I guess when they say that she's been deputized, I guess that means she simply can't work as a CO anymore, at least until they complete this investigation. I'm assuming that's what they mean. So, clearly, I mean, and I got one more thing to say. And, and just to prove that this community really had no interest or desire to serve and protect uh, this family, I mean, uh, I, honestly, I think the local law enforcement knew the man because his wife worked in law enforcement herself. So I think that was another contributing factor of why they didn't take the appropriate actions that they should have took when the family called the law enforcement on him for what he was doing. Now, you know, now as far as it goes for his wife, I'm going to say his wife is a piece of garbage too because you're not going to tell me that she didn't know who the hell this man was. Or who this creature was, rather. Because he a creature to me. He ain't even a human being. I got a feeling that she knew exactly who he was. She knew exactly what he was about. And most likely, she's about that life herself. Which is why they're together. And she knew. And I'm going to go on a limb. And I'm going to say she knew this man had a felony. And he was not supposed to be around firearms. But what did she do? She left firearms around. Now, I don't know if those are her firearms or if... I don't know how they got there. I'm going to assume they're probably from her because he's not allowed to have any. So the fact that she came into his life and, and she married that piece of garbage, left firearms around him and everything, I'm going to assume that she was most likely... I'm going to assume that her philosophies about certain people were the same as his philosophies about certain people. I'll just leave it like that. So, yeah, I don't have any respect for that woman. I hope she, I hope she loses her job. As far as I'm concerned, she can sit in the jail cell with him, and they both can ride in jail for all I care. All right, folks, that's going to complete the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and stay blessed out there. Be careful. And if you like what I do, uh, you can go ahead and give videos like this a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Stay blessed.